I am not a prophet. I do not claim to be a prophet. But I would not doubt that God keeps Donald Trump out of the presidency in 2024 just to show these people are not prophets. Oh, the cry. Can you hear the cries in the streets and the alleys? Oh, for the darkness crumbs upon the land. Hello, everyone. Thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman, a Christian channel where doctrine absolutely matters. Today's video, but first this. Okay, folks, once again, thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woods. If this is your first time here, I hope there's something that, that you can get out of this video, something that something that helps you. And if you're a return viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Um, folks, uh, look, it, spotting false prophets is, is not rocket science, okay? It's just not. If you understand the, the Bible, all right, and I'm not talking about understanding everything. I'm just talking about, let, let's just back that up. <clears throat> if you understand things in the Bible when it comes to prophecy, things like uh, they have to speak 100% of what God says, they have to tell the truth, and if they don't, one time, one time, they're gone. Now, you will hear people say, well, God changed his mind. You know, I could, I can think God changes his mind, but not after the prophet has spoken. See, once the prophet speaks it, it is in stone. Because if it's not, if God allows a prophet to speak, and then God changes his mind, you got to remember the law was, if it didn't come to pass, then that prophet was to be put to death. So God's sitting here, he tells a prophet, tell the prophet this, that, and the other. And the prophet says, God, the Lord, God says this, that, and the other. And then God sits up there in heaven and says, hmm, you know, I don't think I'm going to go that right. I don't think I'm going to make this, that, and the other um, happen. He just burned his prophet. His prophet was to be killed because God changed his mind. Because now what the prophet said would not come to pass. This is why God changes his mind when it comes to a prophet speaking doesn't fly. It does not fly. Now, you may say, oh, Mr. Woodsman, Mr. Woodsman, you have to understand. That was the Old Testament. Now, we're under grace and mercy. We're under grace and mercy. God is so gracious and so merciful that if the prophet gets it wrong, he gets grace and mercy. Now, folks, if there's any number of reasons why God does not just strike down a false prophet, okay? I, I don't—look, I, um, yeah, they're going to get grace and mercy, but they're not a prophet. Grace and mercy applies to their soul. God does not bring down instant judgment on them, but they're not a prophet. See, we, we, we think that— if a prophet gets it wrong, oh, well, it's okay, you know, it's all right. We all get it wrong sometimes. No, not if you're a prophet. Because although God may not strike you dead immediately, number one, you're going to pay for it in the afterlife. But number two, if you allow prophets to say God changed his mind, now anytime a prophet doesn't come true, they can just say, well, God changed his mind. Now you don't know what to believe is real prophecy and what God's going to change his mind on. Then when God really speaks, and he says, hey, thus saith the Lord, this, that, and the other, people will say, well, you know, God always changes his mind with that prophet, so I'm not really worried about that. And then the true word of God gets overlooked. Now, there is one flaw in that, in that God's not going to speak through a false prophet, okay? You know, the Bible where it talks about uh, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, it also says a bad tree, false prophet, cannot bear good fruit, you got to look at that verse. What's going on in today's NAR uh, lying apostles and false prophets is not of God. Folks, <clears throat> the, the, whole, 
the whole thing about thus saith the Lord is designed to bring in new doctrine. You are to mark those people who bring in false doctrine of the church, and you're to get away from them. Folks, this is for your own good. It is for your own good. Look, the the NAR, the Seven Mountain Mandate. Do you realize that one of the seven mountains that, let me back up, you know, the Seven Mountain Mandates, there's these seven mountains, and the Seven Mountain Mandate people, NAR, say that Christians before Christ can come back, not will, but before he can come back, Christians have to take these seven mountains and, and, and it will usher in the kingdom of God on earth, except that's not scriptural. In fact, people, here's what the woodsman thinks. I think the seven mountain mandate, if it starts to come together, understand, now follow. The seven mountain mandate is not of God, okay? It was doctrine brought by an angel to somebody. Um, So it's not of God. But anyway, let's just say, let's just say hypothetically, you see the seven mountains starting to be taken over by Christians. Christians. And you marvel. Why? Why? There's so many, so many Hollywood getting saved. Black China just got saved. Had her fillers and preservatives removed because she said it wasn't godly. Bless the Lord. Which I hope that is a very legitimate, long-lasting conversion. But there's just so many, so many, uh, so many politicians are getting saved. The school system, it's changing no longer. Are they talking about all this this, this transgender stuff? They're actually going to let prayer back in school. And you see steps towards the seven mountains actually happening. You know, one of those is religion. One of the seven mountains is religion, which means religion has to come under unification. Folks, the last church is unified, but it's unified under the Antichrist. What I think could happen is if you see all these seven mountains start to be taken over by Christians and it's M-A-R Christians, what Satan's doing is he's allowing them to do all the work. He's using them to do all the work, and then he's going to step in and yank the carpet right out from underneath them. And then his seven mountains will have been organized by so-called Christians. Isn't that a kick in the teeth? But I'll be honest with you. I, 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 they're go- it's all going to be unified. It's going to be unified because Satan is going to have to have control over it. So all media, it will be controlled by the Antichrist. These seven mountain mandate people think it's the Christ, but it's not. Because Jesus said, the, this, the, 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 my kingdom is not of this world. We forget that. Uh, the seven mountain mandates, Luciferian, the people who preach it, are Luciferian, the people who believe it are deceived because they don't even know where the seven mountain mandate comes from. If you're if you're someone who got onto this channel, okay, and you're gonna say, I'm just gonna find out what this witchman's talking bad against the prophets. I've been hearing about him. I'm gonna see for myself. I dare you. I dare you find out who came up with the seven mountain mandate. Look up the seven spheres of cultural construct. Look up how the seven mountain mandate theology came about. It came through one man and an angel told him to do it. Then you go to your Bible and see what the Bible has to say about angels bringing new doctrine. I dare you to look that up. So folks, before we get into Timothy Dixon video, from time to time, commenters will make comments and there's things that we can learn from them okay now <clears throat> there is such a a commenter uh who made a comment on the last timothy dixon video i made if y'all remember this one right here um and she said this is this guy for real the Bible is clear that mankind are the pinnacle of creation. Does this guy even know God or understand the word? There's nothing wrong with these people. Okay, uh, ma'am, just, just, just right off the bat, okay? Uh, I'm sorry. When you ask a question, you should put a question mark at the end so we know it's a question and not a statement. So, 
Let's get back to what you said. The Bible is clear that mankind are the pinnacle of creation. Okay, well, let's see if what she said is true. So what I've done here is I've used my Bible program to show me everywhere in the Word of God, the King James Version, where the word pinnacle is used. We only see it used in two places, and none of those two places has anything to do with man's creation. So the Word of God does not specifically say man is the pinnacle of God's creation. Now, the definition of pinnacle, okay, from Oxford Language Dictionaries, the most successful point, the culmination. He, and it gives her an example, he had reached the pinnacle of his career. <clears throat> now, you can say things are the pinnacle, but, you know, we've never made the best of anything. You could have a car, and today it's the best money can buy, and then it's not. So we've not made the pinnacle of anything, all right? Um, look, if, if man is the pinnacle of creation, okay, uh, the high point, why did man need to be rescued from hell if he's the pinnacle, the best God could create, the top of God's creation? Folks, man is not at the top of God's creation. See, there's this these things called angels. And even in this Bible verse, it says that when Jesus came to earth and he took on flesh, he was created a little bit below the angel status. Well, if man is below angel status, because even Jesus was made below angel status, so we know man was made below angel status, then the angels should be the pinnacle of creation, should they not? Or at least more towards the pinnacle than man. Now, <clears throat> folks, the whole point of me, me, me saying that, and, 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 and I'm talking about in the video, and I apologize because I obviously did not make my point clear, okay? There was context there, and I failed to make it clear. But in the comment that I gave her, hopefully I made it clear. <clears throat> my comment in the video was not really about man being the pinnacle of, of anything, all right? It was more about trying to make God chase man where it should be man chasing God. See, the new religion, the new, the new doctrine that's coming in through people like Fertig and, and uh, the Todd Meister and all these other people is that God loves you just the way you, you are great the way you're created. Folks, no, you're not. If you want to tell me that Adam, before he sinned, was the pinnacle of God's creation, I still have a problem with the angels being higher on the chain than man. But if you want to go that route, when man sinned, see, you were born into original sin. You were born into sin. That's why when you were a baby and you had chocolate all over your face and your mom said, did you get in the chocolate? You went, no. It was in you to lie the whole time. No one had to teach you to lie. Another child had, a, had a, a toy. You went over there and you just stole it from them. No one had to teach you to steal. It was in your nature. And you're telling me the filthy sinner that we are all born as is the pinnacle of God's creation? But in context, what I was trying to say was these religions, that the religion that's happening today puts man at the pinnacle and they make God chase him him. He doesn't need you. God doesn't need anything. What he gave you was a gift of redemption through Jesus Christ. Folks, the minute 
you start thinking you're all that, you're into vanity and you're into pride. I did a video um, a while back called Is My Channel Destroyed? Now, folks, that video only got 331 views. Because <clears throat> I kind of made it back when I was just starting out. And if you've not seen that video, you will learn something. I promise you. I'll leave the link down below. Watch that video, and I promise you, you will see something that will be a moment. All right? I'm not just trying to get you to watch the video. I don't care if you watch the video. All right? I'm not about all that. I made that video because it will teach you something. Now, in that video, I was brought to tears. Okay? The tears were real. But, folks, in that dream, you got to see a little bit about how I think about myself. See, these people go around talking about a manifestation of God. Oh, the Lord came to me the other day. I was shaving. I heard this on, on one of the YouTube channels. Guy was shaving. Jesus walks in the bathroom while the man is shaving. And they kick it around, man. They have a conversation while dude's over there shaving. Folks, if the Lord Christ appeared to me in reality, in my, in, in, in my realm, I wouldn't want him to look at me. I wouldn't want him to acknowledge my existence. There's no way I could just sit here and continue shaving. Sup, Jesus? They make the appearance of our Lord and the manifestation of God so common and cheap. You are not the pinnacle of God's creation the way you are now, or you wouldn't need a Savior. But in context, what I was trying to say in that was that we should not expect God to be sitting there begging us to be saved. God tells you, choose life that you may live. Here's a door. I stand there and I knock. If you open it, folks, God's not going to kick your door down and force you to be saved. And he doesn't need you. He doesn't need anything. We've gotten now to where we think God needs us. So vain. So vain. Let's, let's get back to her, her comment. Okay, then she says, um, does this guy even know God or understand the word? Okay, well, you, you, look, you can say, I don't know God. That's, I don't have a problem with you expressing your opinion. Um, and then she says, there's nothing wrong with these people. Folks, the people she's talking about is Robin Bullock, Barry Miracle, and Timothy Dixon. These are the people she thinks there's nothing wrong with. Then later, she says this. Let me, let me just read it to you. She says, I never heard of the first guy. So she's never heard of Robin Bullock, but she goes out and says, there's nothing wrong with these guys. There's nothing wrong with these guys, but I don't know the first one. Do you see the problem with that? Uh, then she says, um, I don't know uh, this first guy where he was talking about UFOs, Robin Bullock UFOs. She says, uh, but hundreds of people have been reporting something in the sky last month. I saw something. Have a recording. <clears throat> Folks, let me ask you a question. If I tell you, thus saith the Lord, tomorrow the sun will rise and it will warm the earth because you are such a great creature God created, and he loves you just the way you are, the sun is going to rise tomorrow to continue to give you life. Was that a prophecy? Let's apply it in context. This lady says hundreds of people are reporting things flying in the sky. Well, then was what Robin Bullock did, was it really a prophecy? It's like prophesying the sun's going to rise tomorrow. It either wasn't a real prophecy because it was stupidity, because there's always stuff flying around. 
or it didn't happen. Robin trapped himself. He trapped himself in that he either gave a cookie cutter prophecy, which is a prophecy that's just so common, it's just stupid, or he gave a fortune cookie promise, which you can't prove happened or didn't happen, just like a fortune cookie you get. Or it didn't happen at all, which means he's a false prophet. Either way, what he did was not prophecy. She says there's nothing wrong with these people. Barry Miracle saying, go get your stuff. Jesus Christ was broken and bled on the cross and it was for you to go get stuff. Oh, but there's nothing wrong with these people. Go get your stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And then the final one of these people was Timothy Dixon. This man has lied so many times. Italy should have been destroyed last year, and it's still here. Trump should have been put in office three separate times in three separate months, and he wasn't. But there's nothing wrong with these people. Folks, this is what we're dealing with. This is delusion. They think they've got it all figured out. And yet they're lost as can be because they're following false doctrine. They're on the wide NAR path. They think they're saved. Therefore, they never question, are they saved? Folks, let me tell you what I pray. I pray at night when I go to sleep and I pray a couple different things always. I pray for people. I pray that the Lord show me where I'm wrong. I want to know where I am wrong. I want to know where I have missed it. Lord, show me what I need to do different. Is it my fault this isn't working out? See, I don't count myself as the pinnacle of God like he owes me something. I'm not going to sit here and decree God do it my way. No, I'm going to look at myself as as first being wrong and do I need correction, Lord? That's what I'm going to look at. And I do pray for these people. I pray for Robin Bullock and Timothy Dixon all the time and Kent Christmas and all of them. I pray the Holy Spirit, and I'll do it at the end of this video. I pray the Holy Spirit visit them and convict them of what they're doing wrong. Whether they listen or not. See, folks, these people who are under delusion will make comments. Like there's nothing wrong with these people. Nothing wrong with these guys. And one of them, she didn't even know who he was. So here is a clip. This first clip I'm going to play you is from October 20th of 2020. This is before the election. He's on the Sid Roth show. I looked around and just out of conversation, I said, Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said, he won't. Remember this. I told you this. I said, uh, I looked around and just out of conversation, I said, Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said, he won't. All right. So there, Robin, do you remember that? But she was very quick to defend him. And then she wants to defend Barry Miracle, who says, go get your stuff. You know, all the garbage that's going to burn up, you can't take it to heaven. And Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to get more stuff. There's nothing wrong with these people. That's the delusion. Folks, that's who these videos are trying to reach. That's who the NAR is. They will defend the prophets and the apostles and they know they're not really apostles and prophets. But they're under a delusion. They're under a strong delusion. 
All right, folks, so uh, my hometown heretic, uh, Timothy Dixon, put out another video. Uh, <clears throat> look, there's all kinds of things wrong with this. We are going to, to look. If you'll, just, if you'll just pay attention, okay, I'm about, to sh- I'm, about to, I'm about to show you. I am about to show you how you know if these prophets are really hearing from God or not. Now, this isn't the definitive way, but these are little red flags that should be going, false prophet, false prophet. Folks, you got to pay attention to what they say. Now, folks, here's the video we're going to be reviewing. And listen, uh, I'm not a good speller, okay? I know what I can't spell, and I look for these this little red line under a word, and believe it or not, that red line is making people more stupid, because now we type in anything and just realize, well, if it's if it's if I misspell, then it's it'll pop up. I'll just look for red lines instead of learning the right way to spell, myself included. Um, but come on, come on, Mr. Dixon. You or your people are better than this. But this is the video that we are reviewing. And as the storm gathers on the East Coast, my hand will be laying on a Storms from the East Coast. Look, there's some weird weather out there. I got no doubt a storm's going to come from the East. I, I just don't. I don't doubt it at all. Law of probability. But the Lord's hand is upon everyone's soul? Do you have biblical foundation for that? Now, see, I'm doing my due diligence because I am testing what he says. And I'm using the Bible as the as as the key does it match the bible folks here's the problem the new apostles and prophets don't care what the bible says they bring in the new doctrine and it pushes out that old bible doctrine you you've grown up with yeah it pushes that out so they don't care if this matches up with the bible or not because as dixon said this is the uncharted territory. Uncharted means outside the Bible. This is new day. This is a new church. This is new doctrine. Yeah, and it's all false. He told you in one of his last couple videos, don't be afraid to get out into the uncharted areas. Folks, uncharted means not in here. That's what uncharted. If you hear these NR, NAR preachers talking about getting off the map, that's code for getting out of the Bible. Run from anyone who talks about needing to get off the map, get off into uncharted territory. They're talking about putting away Bible doctrine and allowing the prophets to bring in the new false NAR doctrine. So no, he has no foundation for that. But he doesn't care. For the end of the times of days is upon you. Now, folks, Timothy is confusing me. All right. Um, Timothy is an NAR false prophet proven so many times over and over and over. And he is a believer in the seven mountain mandate. He is a believer in the manifestation of the sons of God. But folks, if the time, if this is the hour of the end, there's not enough time for the seven mountain mandate to happen. Bear with me, I'm going somewhere with this. He's saying now, he's been preaching seven mountain mandate. He said that the uh, the clinics that offer fetus termination for the purpose of birth control, he said those buildings, those brick and mortar buildings would become churches. Because remember when he and Robin Bullock went to heaven a buck naked and stood before God, 
they were vain jangling everywhere for everyone to see. Your grandmother saw that. They were told by God, you've got your country back. See, that was a, a vision or a dream. It was bogus, but that was to let you know we are making steps towards the seven mountain mandate. Even though abortion's really not going anywhere. It's now cheaper and easier to get use that form of birth control. It went nowhere. We have all these issues. We have people declaring their one thing when their physical genetic code says they're another. We have just terrible drug use, homelessness, all kinds of perversions at the click of a button. And yet this man tells you he went to heaven nude. nude. No clothes on. Nothing. And he walked through heaven and stood there as Robin Bullock, who was nude from the waist down, he says he followed behind Robin. <laughs> And Robin presented a scroll signed by the tears of humans, rolled it out before God. And God said, uh, You come to me. What can I do for you? And Robin says, I want my country back. And God says, eh, Granted. So, folks, our country was given back to us, but yet we're all doomed? Folks, as nice as Timothy does play the guitar, you're not here to hear him play. You can go watch the video if you want to hear him play. So I'm going to cut this up <clears throat> so that you're not waiting five to eight seconds between while he picks the guitar. The man can play. I, I uh, look, I, I can't, I can't play anything. All right. I used to think I could play the drums and I can keep a beat with my hands and I can keep a beat with my feet, but I can't put them together. So anyone who can play a musical instrument, wow, I'm impressed. But I, I am going to chop this up, so you're going to hear, you know, skips and everything. But I'm not cutting out his words, and I'm not changing his context. And know that you've not got long way. My judgment is rolling after the things that you've sowed. You're going to reap. Now the time's come for closure. And I will lift up my own. Hey folks, so I have a, a problem with this and any prophet who says this. Because this is ear tickling. All right. This is ear tickling. Let me tell you what he said. He, he Judgment's coming, but God's going to lift up his own. God's going to protect his own. Folks, the wheat and the tare grow together. It rains on the just, and the unjust get the benefit. Folks, you can't separate us. God will do that when he does it at the end of time. <clears throat> For someone to say, prophesy that, that, that bad times are coming for the sinner, but the, the saved will not be affected is just a lie. This whole wealth transfer nonsense, by the way, while you're finding out where NAR Seven Mountain Mandate doctrine comes from, try finding out where the wealth transfer doctrine comes from. <clears throat> Folks, what they'll tell you is, first of all, the wealth transfer is a hook to get you into the NAR uh, Seven Mountain Mandate doctrine. That's the hook, because Christians can be greedy. I want that money. I want that money. I want that sinner's money. Here's what he's done. He's told you God's judgment's coming. And the Christians say, yay, which shame on you for wanting someone to be judged for what they've done. That That is terrible. But the Christians say, yay, judgment's coming. You evil people, you're going to get yours. And then Timothy says, oh, but God's 
God's people will be protected. And then they're like, see, nothing bad's going to happen to me. God's going to supernaturally protect me while he brings judgment down on you. Folks, that doesn't even make sense. Look, when the Jews were sent into exile, all the Jews went into exile. And all were turned into slaves. And all had it bad. Folks, this is false doctrine. This is ear tickling. When someone tells you the sinners are about to be judged by God, but don't you worry, the hand of God will protect his own. Red flag. And if there's not a red flag, why is there not a red flag? You better wake yourself up. Can't you hear the, can you hear the drums rattle? Can you hear the war drum? Can you hear the marching of the angels? Folks, something that you need to be aware of is the NAR. They get messages from angels. We're not into this anymore. We're in uncharted territory. We're off the map. And we're getting information from angels. Folks, that ought to scare you. That is... And if you don't see, you got a problem. You remember that old thing? Signpost up ahead, the Twilight Zone. Folks, the signpost up ahead is if you don't see those red flags, you're a sheep going to the slaughter. I hope you wake up. Can you hear it? They're coming from from the Lord. All right, folks, you're about to sense a change in Timothy Dixon. His, his cadence, his rhythm, it's about to change. Notice that. Across every nation and every tongue and every time. Across every nation, every tongue, and every time. Folks, he's just saying stuff because it sounds biblical. It sounds like God talking. That doesn't even make sense. His sheep won't. Shall the angels of God begin to move? For the time has come that all man shall stand before the judgment seat of God. Folks, this man just told you. The Lord speaking through him, the Lord just said, it is time for all men to stand before the judgment seat of God. Folks, we hadn't had the birth pains yet. I think we're getting into the birth pains. We ain't had the birth pains yet. We ain't had Gog Magog yet. We've not had the instant and within one hour destruction of Damascus yet. We haven't had the the tri- start of the tribulation. We haven't had the rapture. We've not had great tribulation. We've not had any of these things, but yet it's the hour for all men to stand before the judgment seat of God. I'm going to tell you why he's saying these things. I'm going somewhere. I'm getting there. You're going to, when I tell you, you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you will say, well, that's obvious. Some of you will be like, well, okay. At least I hope you will. And them that has hindered God's way. So them that have hindered God's way. Uh, Can you really hinder God? Can you? If God wants his will and he wants his way, can you really stand in his way? I think this statement is for all the people who come against the prophets and apostles. We don't just jump on board because an angel brings new doctrine and we're like, wow. We actually have biblical common sense to know The Bible says, don't wow over an angel bringing you a new gospel, a new doctrine. I think that's what he's talking about, but then he talks about this right here. Them that has crucified the Lord afresh, you'll answer. Now, I know there's the whole Hebrew 6, 4 through 6 um, verses, but little do people know that in the Catholic Mass, 
when they offer up the blood and the wine as the body and blood of Christ. They crucify him every Sunday. So I don't know if this is a reference to Hebrews 6, 4 through 6, or if this is a reference to Catholicism, or if this is a reference to someone who comes against the apostles and prophets as being false. I'm sorry, but I guess the Lord's a little ambiguous here. But all the time is here upon all mankind. Now, I don't know if the Lord's attempting to sing when that happens. Oh, mankind. Or if Dixon is trying to sound spooky. Or what's going on. But this is not the Lord. <laughs> that you'll need, you'll need my hand, saith the Lord. You'll need my hands upon you. You'll pray for forgiveness. Oh, but the hour is dark. And who hears my prayer? Who hears my cries? Who hears my prayers? Who hears my cries? Okay, now, folks, when Jesus was on earth, he would pray to the Father. Does Jesus pray now? Does he pray for us? If he does, who does he pray to? Does he pray to himself? Mr. Dixon, you're not prophesying. You're not speaking, thus saith the Lord. You're speaking from your own heart. And I know why. And I'm going to reveal it before the end of this video. Who hears me calling to you? Who answers me? Who answers me? Oh, for the darkness crumbs upon the land. All right, folks, this is important. I'm building a case here. Ooh, darkness is on the land. Darkness is now on the land. But great revival as I move my hands. Hey, folks, so great revival as God is moving his hand. Folks, I'm sorry about that. Um, let me let me let me teach you something in case you don't know it already. Um what the NAR and what these apostles and prophets, modern day false apostles and prophets, what they're doing is saying that there's going to be a great revival in the land. Folks, you want to know the truth? It's not a great revival. There is no great revival predicted during the time of sorrows and tribulation and great tribulation. There's an apostasy of the church. Folks, this is, this is diabolical. They're saying a great revival is coming. And what I'm telling you is the apostasy is here and indoctrination into the NAR, Antichrist Church, is the revival they speak of. It's indoctrinization. It's the transition from sound doctrine to false doctrine. There's going to be this great push, and it's happening, this great push into NAR doctrine <clears throat> with this whole uh, Jesus revival, Jesus movement thing going on, taking you from sound doctrine into anything goes Asbury, all that falseness. Folks, that's not revival. That's transition into Antichrist church, into NAR doctrine. They see it as revival. The remnant church sees it as transition into false doctrine. Folks, we're not experiencing a revival. We're experiencing the apostasy where church folks are leaving sound doctrine and they are being indoctrinated into false doctrine. There is no revival. It's a transition into the new church, the one world last church. That's what you're seeing. Oh, the time has come. Oh, I see a darkness across the land. You see, folks, this is how, how bad the ear tickling is. <clears throat> if I was to sit here and tell you, oh, there's darkness on the land, there's darkness on the land. It's, it's, it's a terrible time. It's a terrible time. All the good Christian people who love to suck up the pigeon food this guy's barfing out, 
they're going to get depressed. And they're going to be like, well, Timothy never has anything good to say. So what Timothy does is he says, oh, there's a darkness on the land. Judgment is coming to Italy. Judgment is coming to Pelosi and Schumer and Biden and Kamala. And judgment is coming to you. And then he says, but victory to the ones who are saved. God will protect you through all. <clears throat> He's tickling the ears twice. Because Christians love to hear how the evil people are going to get theirs. We've been telling you for years, you're going to be judged. And now the judgment's here. And they love hearing that. They don't have mercy anymore. There's no mercy. I, don't, I, I bet a handful of his followers actually cry out and cry for Pelosi and Schumer and Biden. Ache, ache for their salvation. I bet there's a handful out of the thousands of people that watch him. Instead, they're all jumping up and down. Yay, God's going to judge. So he tickles the ears that way. And then when he says, and God's going to protect you supernaturally, he tickles your ears a second time. Folks, that's a bonus tickle. This, this is the condition of the NAR, Luciferian, Antichrist Church. It's all about signs and wonders and experiences over doctrine, and it's ear-tickling with every new day of doctrine they bring you through the prophets. There's no Bible in this. You do realize he's not cracked open the Bible. He's said some Bible verses, but they're wrapped up in prophecy so that it sounds palatable. The people will believe it's the Lord. Oh, yes, I know that's the Lord because that's in the Bible. That's the way the Lord speaks. You need to wake up, people. You need to wake up. If you're someone who loves Timothy Dixon and you're still in this video, I beg you. I beg you, learn where his doctrine comes from because that's the doctrine he is feeding you and you are eating up. He can't give it to you fast enough. I see it grows darkness, but there's a many of people that is turning their, turning their heads and will not take heed, will not listen to the Lord. Draw close to him now. Know him. For them that knows their God shall be strong in these latter days and do exploits. Do exploits? Hey, Siri. Mm -hmm. Define the word exploit. As a verb, exploit means... Make full use of and derive benefit from a resource. Do you want to hear the next one? No, ma'am, that's good. Hmm. Exploits. Don't listen to the lying tongue, says the Lord. Them that prophesies peace, and there is no peace. Mr. Dixon, that's all you and your, your false prophetic good time gospel NAR doctrine has been teaching these people. What do you think the wealth transfer is? What do you think the seven mountain mandate is? That's peace NAR style. <clears throat> Mr. Dixon, let me give you some free advice here. I don't like your doctrine. I don't like the fact you lead people astray daily. I don't fact, like the fact that you lie to people and you say it's what the Lord tells you. But I'm going to give you some free advice. The book of Jeremiah is not your friend, sir. It's what points you out as a false doctrine, lying prophet. And you're going to quote it? Sir, you are sick. You are delusional. You are the book of Jeremiah, but all the bad parts. And you quote it as if it's righteousness out of your mouth? Sir, you condemn yourself with your own words. Your souls should be troubled and stirred to the point that everyone should be praying across the world. All right, folks, we're getting close to the end. Let me just point out that just a few weeks ago, man, he was preaching everything is going to be apple pie and ice cream. Man, the Lord is so great. Everything is working out great. It's a great time. Just a few weeks ago, and that's all his prophecies were about. But there's been a 
shift, shall we say. Wonder why. I know why. Because every nation and every tongue is in the chaos. They're in a chaos today because Satan has been cast down to the earth. He knows that he has but a short time. Mr. Dixon, Satan was, was cast down to earth thousands of years ago. See, folks, he, when, he's, when he's stirring up his brand of pigeon food, the stuff he's going to barf out on the sidewalk and his little sheep pigeon are going to come over and eat up, he throws in some Bible so that it sounds holy. It sounds like what God would say. And his sheep are too gullible and too spiritually retarded to know what he's doing to them. Folks, he's feeding you garbage. This is not the Lord speaking, and it's Timothy Dixon speaking lies. But it sounds good. Remember, now we, we cherish experience over doctrine, and he's giving them a biblical experience here. He's taking them somewhere spiritually. It's smoke and mirrors, and they don't see it. And Mr. Dixon, you'll pay for it if you don't get this right before your last breath. I promise you, you will pay for every lying prophecy you have ever done. Every time you tried to speak something into existence as a prophecy. Every time you spoke as you were the Lord speaking and it was your own heart you will pay for every vain word and idle word you have spoken that led people astray into false doctrine, sir. It's going to be a sad day. Not only for you, but for your followers, the ones that follow you and believe this garbage. It's going to be a sad day for them. And you that mocks me, your day is coming that you'll regret the days of all of the evil and the hatred that you've spread you remember everything that you've done in the middle of this burning flame and you wish you could have changed but you would not listen to none of my reproofs you would not hear me when i called you you made fun of all the prophets and the pastors you've laughed at them you Mocking people? Who's mocking people? Hey, uh, <clears throat> okay, so I think this is the Lord again speaking through Dixon. See, these, these false prophets, here's what they do. They prophesy, and then without you knowing it, they go into the flesh, and that's them. And then they, without you knowing it, they go back into the Lord speaking. You, you, you never know who you're getting here. Folks, that's not orderly. That's, that's not of God. That's another sign. <clears throat> um, now, I know that there are more than just me that that call uh, his doctrine false. There is Drew Bloom, and there are some others. Um, but I think there's even more that we don't know about that he's talking about. Because, <clears throat> and I'll just speak for me, and I'll speak for Drew. <clears throat> uh, we are not... Uh, making fun of all preachers. W folks, we are Christian. We love the Lord. We are blood-bought saved. What we're calling out is false doctrine. So when he says, use that comes against the prophets, oh, okay, yeah, now you're talking about me. I know that, okay? Because you can't stand it, Mr. Dixon, that someone has the nerve to break NAR protocol and question a prophet or apostle. But we don't make fun of preachers. Mm -mm. I don't make fun of Christianity. Not real Christianity. I make fun of the NAR nonsense and all this big picture church that are happy to fly a multicolor flag out in front of their church. Yeah, I make fun of them. I absolutely do. They're not off limits. Just like, just like, you know, the, the prophets of Baal, you think they weren't made fun of? I think they were. And no one says anything about them. Folks, 
this man, and I hate to say this, I really hate to say this, he is so delusional. He can't see that all the people trying to correct his doctrine, he, they're trying to help him, and he sees it as an assault on God. Folks, that's how delusional this man is. He thinks that by us calling out his false doctrine, that we're assaulting the Lord's prophet. We would never do such a thing. He can't see it because he's delusional. He's got NAR glasses on. He's bought. He drank the Kool-Aid. And he believes the seven mountain men in NAR doctrine. And he's doing it at the peril of his own soul. You took my evangelicism. You took my evangelicism. You took my evangelicism. Folks, Jesus knows how to say, you've taken my evangelists. He, he wouldn't say, you took my evangelists. Folks, this is Timothy Dixon. This is not the Lord. The Lord can speak better English than evangelists. And you've made fun of them, and you smeared them, and you've made jokes of them. But now the time has come that the joke is not so funny no more. But now it's time to come when the joke's not funny no more. Jesus doesn't know what a double negative is. The creator of all language and communication doesn't know what a double negative is, folks. There'll be a storm that comes out of the northeast, says the Lord of hosts. Okay, folks, there's some crazy weather going on. <clears throat> I know why, because the flower girl um, is now the flower girl. We keep up with the weather like crazy. There's a bunch of strange, we strange weather happening because before all this strange weather started happening, they measured the coldest column of air on sitting on top of the North Pole. Normally, it, the, the cold air piles up and then it comes down. When After it weighs so much, it, it comes down. They measured the, the coldest column and highest column they've ever measured. And now that it is falling down, it's pushing weird cold over the United States. This was predicted months before it happened. So you are getting strange weather. It is not going to be uncommon. Folks, look, uh, Southern California, I think, was getting snow. Nevada was getting, Las Vegas was getting snow. Look, there's some weird weather going on, okay? For him to predict that there's going to be a storm come out of the northeast, whatever. Okay. And then if it doesn't happen, he'll say it was a political storm or something. It'll be a different kind of storm. Or then if that doesn't happen, God changed his mind. It shall sound like a train coming through. And great winds shall reckon from the storm that has not been in history. Now, folks, we know that the Dixon sheep, because they're too busy gorging themselves on pigeon food daily, they don't keep up with his false prophecies. See, last year he prophesied that storms, like ones that had never been recorded before, would come from the Atlantic and hit the United States, and it didn't happen. Folks, it he's lying. Now, now here's the, the beauty of the lie. <clears throat> A great storm is coming out of the Northeast. It sounds like a train with the winds. So now if it's a physical storm with winds, prophecy fulfilled. If it's a train wreck, prophecy fulfilled. And if it doesn't happen, see, it's got to be a storm that is a record-breaking storm. If it doesn't happen, his people don't care. They don't keep up with it. And even if they did, they would lie to themselves and say, it's okay. God changed his mind out of mercy. He didn't want to hurt anyone. Because when it doesn't happen, that is exactly what the so-called prophet of God will tell his sheep. Oh, you prayed and it didn't happen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord changed his mind. He had mercy on these poor souls. Folks, he, he can't lose. He'll just wiggle out of what lie, what tangled web he weaved. He'll just wiggle out of it by saying, 
God's merciful and he changed his mind. You prayed, you touched the throne of God and he repented of that evil he was going to do on these poor people. The same one he calls death down upon for messing with Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, we get it, Mr. Dixon. And neither has it ever been the like that it shall be. All right, folks, here's the key to the prophecy. It has to be a storm with winds that there is no other storm ever happened like it on earth. Or let's just say to the east. The the, the east will 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 get a storm that there like there has never been. If that doesn't happen, this man is a liar. And if it does happen, so what? This isn't biblical prophecy. Folks, this prophecy is designed for nothing more than to be able to say, See, I'm a prophet. I got it right. Who's getting saved? What is God doing by telling people that he's sending a storm to the north? It's coming out of the northeast. Let's be, let's be specific. It's coming out of the northeast. Folks, this is not prophecy. This is soothsaying. This is witchcraft. The little symbol you saw on Mr. Dixon's head was appropriately placed there. It's a witchcraft symbol. Dare you to look it up. For a storm shall come across the southeast side and corners of Canada, and it shall blow out of Canada into the United States, the lacking of a storm that has not been seen. Quickly and speedily, says the Lord of hosts, quickly it comes. Quickly it comes. I will have them that stands like Elijah. I will have them that stands for my word. And I will stand for those like I did Elijah and Moses. Now, folks, it was subtle. You probably didn't catch it. See, when normal Christians, remnant Christians, hear word of God, we think of the Bible. It's the word of God. Not so with this man. <clears throat> See, folks, when the NAR, when the apostles and prophets talk about the word of the Lord or the word of God, they mean the words that the prophets have delivered. That's why he threw in Elijah and Moses. They were both prophets. They both prophesied. Folks, when he says the word of the Lord, he's not talking about the Bible. He's talking about words that came out of his mouth, out of Robin Bullock and Kent Christmas and Johnny Slick Kuhneman. He's talking about the words that came out of their mouths, Amanda Grace, Julie Green. Folks, that's the new word of the Lord. The new word of the Lord is what comes out of the mouth, the filthy lying mouth of a false prophet. That's the new word of the Lord. Don't get it mixed up. He is not talking about the Bible as being the word of the Lord. For the times of the end of the world is upon this nation and upon the nations of abroad. Folks, here's another way you know this man is not hearing from God. For the end of the, the times of the end of the world is upon this nation and abroad. Well, the end of the world encompasses everything. Oh, no, but we got to know that it's this nation and abroad. <laughs> Folks, the Lord knows when he says the times of the end of the world are at hand, he doesn't have to say this world and this nation and abroad. It's just the end of the world. But, folks, there's not enough time for the NAR to get the seven mountain mandate in place. And according to the seven mountain mandate, Jesus cannot come back he is bound in heaven he cannot come back until the seven mountain mandate is achieved is he backstroking on a being a seven mountain mandate believer it's at the foundation of so much of his doctrine all his buddies preach it <clears throat> but now all of a sudden time's up we're all being judged we're not even to the birth pains yet we're barely into them we're, we're, the time of sorrows is not even fulfilled yet. We still have Damascus and Gog and Magog. Folks, this man's not hearing from God. And as the troubles begins to take the streets, as the people becomes uneasy and 
as they walk through the cities and violence begins to come. Hear the word of the Lord. For these people tries to set an error. They are not my people. All right, folks. So <clears throat> we're gonna we're still gonna watch some more of Dixon. Um, but here's what here's what this is about. Remember, I told you. He has been um, <clears throat> talking about how great things are going to be. The great revival. The Lord's going to move in such a mighty way. The wealth transfer. Everything's going to happen. It's just a great day to be in America. And then all of a sudden, it's all gloom and doom and judgment. And boy, the prophet is mad. God is mad. He has had enough of you people. You know why? What's happening to make God so mad all of a sudden? It's this right here. See, folks, Timothy Dixon prophesies from his own heart. His own heart. He speaks what's in his own heart. This is no secret to anyone who's been watching our videos, my videos, Bloom's videos. There's no secret here. He thinks that Trump is the new David. He and Bullock both. And as long as Trump is on top, the world is great. Everything will be fine. A chicken in every pot. Low gas prices. High returns on gold, according to Polney. Everything's great. But now that Trump's going to be arrested, he's depressed and his heart has sunk. And you see the change in his prophecies. When they started talking about arresting Trump and indicting him, his prophecies changed. Because he's prophesying from his own heart. He's not prophesying, thus saith the Lord. His prophecies changed when Trump was rumored to start to be indicted a, a week or two ago, two weeks ago, however long it was. His prophecies changed their texture, their content changed. They became gloomy and doomy and judgmental because that's what's in his heart. He's prophesying from his heart. And when everything was great, when Trump announced that he was going to be running for office and it is just so great. And politically, he gets on here with these little snipes and he eats the lunch of the liberals and everything is so great. The prophecies were great. But now that the left has indicted Trump, now all of a sudden the prophecies are very gloomy and doomy and they're all about judgment. Folks, it's because that's where his heart is. He's hurt that his idol, Donald Trump, has been indicted. Folks, this is not a prophet. This is not what a prophet does. What he does is not prophecy. He's a soothsayer. He's trying to speak things in existence. And all of it comes from his own heart. He's down and depressed, and that's why his prophecies are down and depressed. Mr. Dixon, what I'm about to say is just for you. Whichever one of your staff is watching my videos, or any of the friends of yours that are watching, this message is directly to you, sir. And it's this. I thought we got our country back. That's what God said, right? Book said, I want my country back. And God said, granted, and Donald Trump is being indicted. Is that what you call getting your country back? But hear me today, says the Lord, warning you. There's a trap set. There's a trap set, says the Lord. They'll try to lure you. They'll try to lure you into, into a rage. They'll try to lure you into violence because that's what they are wanting the evil people that is trying to take over America. It's a European demonic force that has come from afar. All right, folks, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't find his words. I know exactly what he's trying to say, okay? Anyone who follows what's about to happen and keeps up with the news and knows about the times and, and can see things, not like mystical see things, but, but know what's coming because of past experience, here's what the man was trying to say. And I think he was trying to be careful because he's on thin ice on YouTube. Now, here's what I think he was trying to say. Hypothetically speaking, 
after Donald Trump is arrested, there's going to be riots in the streets, hypothetically speaking. And hypothetically speaking, the people who are rioting in the streets, hypothetically speaking, are going to look like Donald Trump supporters. But hypothetically speaking, they're not going to be Trump supporters. Hypothetically speaking, they're going to be people like Antifa if they really exist or not. They're going to be people, hypothetically speaking, from the left hypothetically speaking, who are going to be causing trouble, and hypothetically speaking, they are going to be the ones trying to look like Trump supporters, but they're not, hypothetically speaking, in order to make it where he can be charged again if this one fails, hypothetically speaking. That's what, hypothetically speaking, he was trying to say, but he couldn't pull it off. They will push, and they will push, they will try to cause... An uprising is what they want. Hear me, my people. Fall upon your knees and pray. And you'll see my angel stands up in different ways. Death, my death angels. The angels shall take the breath of them that perverts and them that lifts to crucify me afresh. It would have been better that your a millstone be tied about your neck and you cast into the sea then you have been born and do the things that you do today. All right, folks, I've pointed this out in other videos. This is another way you can tell he's not a prophet. And he does this all the time, and so do others, okay? it's it, Kent Christmas does it. Um, I think I've seen Bullock do it, but they all do it, okay? Here's, here's what they do. When they do this ad lib, prophet's lying, they get fatigued, and they they get in the zone, and it, it, it's, it's like a wave. They build up and then they peak and then they don't have a lot to say, but they're too proud. They're feeling it. So instead of just ending it on a high note and saying, thus saith the Lord, have a good day, please donate to my cause. They keep going and they start to stumble and mumble and make mistakes. Folks, he's having trouble finding something to prophesy about. This is the second time he's talked about crucifying Christ anew or fresh. <clears throat> folks, he's he's fatigued. He he can't find his words. He's running out of things to say. I cut out a big block of that where he locks up going because he can't think of what to say. Folks, it was a long time I cut that out. He's having trouble thinking of what to say because he's fatigued because this is of the flesh. It's in his own heart. He's making it up, and he's having trouble at this point continuing to make it up off the cuff or ad lib. All right, folks, so I was um, contacted by somebody. Let's just call this person J.R. J.R. And J.R. and I were talking on the phone, <clears throat> and he said, and, and I kind of agree with him in this, that these people, they could very well be hearing what they're saying they could very well be but they don't know it's not the lord something may be sending them dreams but they don't know they're not from the lord something may be sending them messages but they don't know it's not from the lord they don't know the difference an angel may be bringing them new doctrine but it's not the angel of the lord so jay i and our J.R. and I talked about this, <clears throat> and I kind of agree, but there are some instances where, no, they're just, they're just, they're in it for the money. Um, you get people like Amanda Grace and Julie, uh, Julie Green, um, some others. <clears throat> I, in my personal opinion, hypothetically speaking, think they are just in it for the money, the, the glory and the money. But I've often thought that maybe Dixon really is hearing something. He doesn't know it's not the Lord. He doesn't have enough sense in the spirit to know, wait a minute, the NAR doctrine is a lie. The wealth transfer is a lie. The sons of the manifestation of God is a blasphemous heretical teaching. He either doesn't know that or doesn't want to know it. I happen to think that there's a little bit of both. I think he wants to be the immortal manifestation of the sons of God. He wants to be immortal among mortality. That's what that teaching teaches. But, folks, in this case, um, we have seen that this man is not hearing from God. Everyone who has a dream 
It is not for the edification of the church. Folks, I have had rapture dreams, and they did not. I knew it was the rapture, but it was not like what the Bible says. So guess what? It was not a rapture dream from God. It was because I was looking and studying and stressing and all that, and my brain popped out a rapture dream. Because that dream did not match up with the Word of God. It wasn't a dream from God. How easy is that? These people can't make that separation. They are trying to cause an uprising with the arresting of President Donald Trump. They are trying to cause an uprising. Hear me. Do not fall for it. Pray, stand. I want to know where all the prophets are that prophesied Donald Trump would be indicted and arrested for paying hush money to a professional lady of the evening movies, whatever. Where are all the prophets that that saw that coming? Anyone? 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 Mr. Dixon, you, you and God are buddies. You are such big buddies, you can stand before him naked in front of heaven and everybody! Why didn't God tell you DJ was going to be arrested for paying hush money for a sexual encounter? Mr. Bullock, God talks to you all the time. Boy, he tells you who he's going to kill and everything. Where's your prophecy that Donald Trump was going to be indicted over paying hush money to basically a prostitute? Where was it? It's nowhere. Number one, because Donald Trump is your idol. And number two, you are not prophets. You guys are pushing an agenda. You guys are pushing an agenda just as much as the left pushes an agenda. And yet you criticize the news media and the left. Yet you do the same thing. Take the beam out of your own eye, gentlemen. You can stand peaceably. You can pray. You can stand and refuse. You can refuse the orders of the disobedience, of the negligence of the things that's trying to destroy your country. Refuse to do it. Folks, what does that even mean? Folks, that's not the Lord speaking. That's Timothy Dixon speaking, and he is fatigued. He doesn't know what to say. He can't think anymore. Folks, that is not the Lord speaking. That is Timothy Dixon. He's tired. His brain's not working. That is not Jesus Christ, your Lord, speaking a message to you. But know, know that they try to provoke an uprising. And hear me, you'll see, you'll see a violence hit the streets of New York. But it will be a paid action, says the Lord. It will not be. It will not be the supporters of the good president. But it will be paid activists, says the Lord, that they might cause a worse than January the 6th. Folks, he doesn't even know what he's saying. He's numb at this point. All right, look, folks, it has long been theorized. This is just a theory that the people who are doing the rioting are paid to do it. That's just the theory that people have come up with out of nowhere that, that, you know, that's all hypothetical. So this is, this is not a prophecy, folks. This is anyone with common sense who keeps up with world current events knows what's about to happen. Folks, I want to tell you something to be delicate when I say this. When I was a lawman, I was taught that the best liars the best ones there are three lies ahead of the lie you just discovered there are three lies ahead of the one you just discovered they've got a lie to cover a lie but they're so far ahead of you it's taken you a while to discover it now folks hypothetically speaking strictly hypothetical speaking what if you had a president who was recently indicted and then there was rioting in the streets and then they blamed that riot on the streets on that president, hypothetically speaking. And then he had so many charges against him and so many congressional investigations that just went on and on and on. You know they're not going to stick, but it bogs him down so bad he can't run an effective election. Then you wouldn't have to have any charges to stick on a president at all. Remember when Mitt Romney 
was running for president and uh, Harry Reid drum up this whole nonsense about like taxes and all this other nonsense. And it was all made up because he went on a night show, uh, one of the nighttime shows. I don't know if it was Letterman or whoever it really was. But they said something to him, uh, as Rush Limbaugh called him Dingy Harry. Dingy Harry was there. And the host of this night show, whichever one it was, said something to the extent of, well, you, you really made all that up against Mitt Romney. You, you had no proof of that, and you lied to the American people. And you know what, you know what Dingy Harry said? Well, he's not president, is he? Folks, it, it, it happened and it worked once before. What makes you think that they can't improve on what was done in the past and make it better, hypothetically speaking? Just the charges would spread his finances and him so thin, defending here, defending here, defending here, defending here, he couldn't run a good campaign. Now, what I'm about to tell you is not hypothetical. I am not a prophet. I do not claim to be a prophet. But I would not doubt that God keeps Donald Trump out of the presidency in 2024 just to show these people are not prophets. I've said it in other videos. I'm telling you again. I would not be surprised if Donald Trump is so neutralized that he can't run a campaign. And he's not president. And all of you filthy mouth lying prophets who put that man in the presidency in 2024 what are you going to say i heard robin bullock say it the other day and i predicted this they're going to say well you know he this is what bullock said well you know he's got to want it he can't just be president he's got to want it and if he doesn't want it god's not going to force him to be president i've been telling you folks when Donald Trump doesn't doesn't qualify to be president, he doesn't get the primary or he loses, it's going to be, well, God saw what was going to happen to Donald Trump, and God loves him so much he didn't want that to happen to Donald. So he, he rescued him from the presidency. Or Donald Trump was just so tired, he really didn't want it, and God didn't want it. God honored his request in saying, Lord, please don't make me be president again. Folks, those are the lies you are going to hear. If Donald Trump does not become president, and I'm going to go a little deeper, what if your president, Donald Trump, in 2024, you fought for him? You thought he's going to bring in the seven mountain mandate. I heard Lance Walno praying for just one more billionaire. Lord, we got Donald Trump. We got Elon Musk. We need one more to help with the with the uh, seven mountain mandate and the world transfer uh, wealth transfer. He he was praying that prayer. Folks, what if God gives you what you want, and when the man gets in office and he doesn't have to worry about reelection, he goes crazy. Not literal mental crazy. But he goes crazy in doing what he wants to do, and it is not Christian conservatism. We already know he wants Israel to give up land for peace. We never heard it, never heard a bullock talk about that, folks. You know, you hear the old saying, "People get the government they deserve," and then the old saying, "Beware of what you ask for; you might get it." Both of those apply with Donald Trump. This could be a disaster that these Christians fight for so hard. And when the man gets in there, something's different about him. He's not the same DJ he was before. He's different. What are you going to say then, Christian? Lift up your voices like a trumpet, says the Lord of hosts. Because Esther, Esther had been put in the place that she was in for the reason and even so, I lay my hands upon Donald Trump. I have reared him up for this reason and for this hour and for this day. And Haman, Haman, you shall hang upon your own gallows. Them that you have built for the Jews. Them that you'll hang Mordecai on. You'll dangle from the own noose that you have tied. Hear me, saith the Lord of hosts. 
My body shall come into one mind and one accord for the disclosures of the times it's upon you. See, folks, he has to preach unity because that is one of the mountains in the seven mountain mandate, a unified church. Folks, we know there's a unified church coming. It's the church of the Antichrist. This man is preaching it. He is telling you that Jesus speaking through him says you got to do it. Folks, he is a liar. Hear me, saith the Lord of hosts. Hear me. For the hour is late and the day is long. The, the time is far spent. Oh, the cry. Can you hear the cries in the streets and the alleys? Can you hear the cry for justice? Can you hear the cry for justice? The justice, the angel of justice has reared in Alabama. F folks, there's an angel of justice, and he's reared his head in Alabama. Now, Alabama can say, we've got an angel of justice reared its head up. Look to the gates, for the angel stands with the swords in his hands, that the word of the Lord shall come forth, and judgment shall be rendered out of the mouths of the judges, and oh, ye justices, lift up your voices and declare the truth and declare righteous judgment. Declare the righteous judgment that this land was founded upon. It's the hour, the hour of change, the hour of change and triumph. Can you hear the sound of the noise of the of the galloping horses. Can you hear the sound of the soldiers? Can you hear the sound of war? That's the sound of victory, says the Lord of hosts. It's the sound of victory. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Even in death, there's no sting. There's no sting. Wait a minute. You you said no weapon formed against me would prosper, and then you went, and even in death there's no sting. Well, wait a minute. How did we go from no weapon formed against you shall prosper to death? This man's a prophetic joke. For I'll move upon the people of the Senate, and I'll move upon Congress and the political powers of America, and they too shall see that the different hands that has rose up to destroy this country, rather they be Democrat or Republican, or whatever their political stand is, I'll rise up in their hearts and righteousness shall rise and shine and stand in their view and their vision. And justice shall come forth, says the Lord of hosts. Folks, if you just listen to what the man says, he will betray his prophetic gift left and right. The man cannot prophesy. He, this whole thing was him either trying to speak something into existence... Or something is just popping into his mind or his being and he just thinks it's the Lord talking through him. And it's all a prophecy of his own heart. It's a prophecy of his own deceit. Folks, this is evil. Now, I want you to understand something. I am attacking Mr. Dixon's doctrine, okay? <clears throat> Mr. Dixon is a soul that needs salvation, just like everybody else, all right? I pray for the man. And that's what we're going to do now. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to pray that um, Mr. Dixon somehow, just somehow, comes out of this. So if you would just take just a minute. I, I, when I pray, I don't have a whole bunch of words. I just get right to it. Lord, thank you for all that you do for us, how you protect us and you provide for us, Lord. Right now, Father, I ask that you send your spirit to Timothy Dixon. Send your Holy Spirit to, to Dixon and Bullock and Christmas and Grace and Green 
and Kuhneman and Johnson and Sheets and all these others, Lord, all these others that are preaching this false lying doctrine, taking your people astray, taking them away from you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit just one more time to each of them and convict them of the doctrine that they are pushing. Lord, convict them so that they would repent and return to you, Father. Lord, I ask that you do this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. Amen. Folks, that's the video. I hope to see you again really soon here on the Alabama Woodsman.